Welcome back to the Oliver Lynn channel. This is over the horizon sports analysis from a holographic perspective. Well, the first game of the World Series is in the books. Cleveland Indians won six to nothing over the Chicago Cubs. Uh, one of the scenarios that we did put out uh, came true that the uh, four functioning team, which is the Cleveland Indians, they're on that strange day, so they're going to come out either flat or they're going to come out like a buzzsaw and shred the Cubs. And, well, that's what happened. The score didn't indicate it uh, until late in the game. It was only 3 to nothing until the eighth inning. Um, let's uh, take a review <clears throat> of uh, what happened in that game. John Lester, who was the losing pitcher in tonight's game for the Cubs, uh, identified his polarity back from 1908 as Jack Fister. Uh, Jack Fister, he pitched game three of the 1908 World Series. It was the only game that the Cubs lost in that series. We had uh, hitters uh, that we put out uh, that would be uh, that would do the best for this day. The uh, Cubs hitters. We gave as uh, Almora. He didn't. Uh, he didn't bat. He pinch run. Uh, Rizzo. He didn't have any any hits. Uh, Baez. He had one hit. Zobrist had three hits, and Fowler had zero hits. The Cubs' total hits in the game was seven. So those five players, one of which didn't bat, so we had four players that actually batted, had four hits, or 57% of the offense. So that was okay. Um, the uh, possible heroes for the game for the Indians we gave as Kipnis. Uh, he didn't have any hits. We had Brantley. He did not play. Uh, Santana, he had two walks. Chisenhall had one run and one hit. And the catcher, Perez, had two runs, two hits, four RBIs, two home runs. So, we had the, the best hitter from the Cubs we had with three hits. No one else had more than one, I don't believe. Uh, we had the catcher Perez, uh, Roberto Perez. He, uh, he accounted for four of the six Cleveland runs. So he was by far the, uh, the most valuable player hero from, uh, game one, the, uh, pitcher, uh, Corey, uh, Corey Kluber, uh, he had, uh, he pitched a great game. Uh, he didn't collapse at all. His worst innings as a, uh, two, uh, program is, uh, the fifth inning and the seventh inning. He made it through the fifth inning. Uh, the seventh inning, he got, uh, they had the bases loaded. The Cubs had the bases loaded. The, uh, the coach, which is, uh, Terry Francona, he's a five program. Uh, he was on a most compatible day. Remember, I told you he should make good decisions. And he pulled uh, Kluber uh, in the seventh and brought in another pitcher. Uh, I believe, yeah, he brought in Miller, which uh, did good on this day, which he was supposed to do good on this day. So Terry Francona did his job at the right time because that seventh inning, the, fifth, the first, fifth, or seventh inning for that two-program pitcher is often a meltdown inning, and if he would have left uh, Kluber in, then uh, the Cubs probably would have scored one, two, three, or more runs. Uh, I've seen them score up to six and eight runs when the uh, manager doesn't pull the pitcher uh, when he's imploding like that. Uh, John Lester didn't pitch bad. He pitched great. Only gave up three runs. Uh, we're going to look here. Uh, so we had we had the, uh, Joe Madden, the Cubs manager. He was on his worst day as a manager. Well, he did fine uh, until the eighth inning. And then remember the list of pitchers I said that uh, we're going to be on a bad day. Okay, and they shouldn't be pitching that day. 
uh, we had for the Cubs, their relievers, uh, I gave out as uh, the pitchers you don't want to see if you're a Cubs fan is Strop, Wood, and Rondon. Okay, it came to the eighth inning. Lester did a great job for uh, seven. Comes to the eighth inning, and uh, Strop comes in, faces two batters. Okay, he made it through okay. Uh, Wood came in, he faced the batter, and made it through okay. Um, then, uh, see, the, the coach pulled him after two batters and one batter. Obviously, he didn't like what he was seeing, and that's because those two pitchers were on their least compatible day. Then he brings in uh, Rondon, which was another one I gave as being on his worst day. And uh, that was the second home run that uh, Roberto Perez hit. It was a three-run shot, and uh, that wasn't Rondon's fault. You know, he shouldn't have been in there. Um, but, you know, the coach made it through with Strop and Wood for uh, three batters total, uh, you know, poking that bear. But uh, eventually, you know, that, that one of those least compatible programs, it's going to collapse. And uh, that's it. It was a three-run shot in the eighth inning, which uh, moved the score to 6 nothing. We're going to look here at, at Perez a little bit. And this here uh, photo on the screen is from the 1908 Cleveland Naps. This man's name is Grover Land. He was born on... Uh, 9-22-1884. He is a seven uh, program. He was uh, the catcher for the Cleveland Naps uh, for eight games. It was the only eight games he played that year. But he was on that Naps team and he was on it for five years. He caught eight games uh, for the 1908 Cleveland Naps. This is the historic twin that returns uh, as Roberto Perez's historic twin. Uh, Roberto Perez is, uh, he was born on 12 1988 which makes him a seven program also. And this photo of Grover Land, uh, he played those eight games as catcher. Roberto Perez is the catcher of the Indians today. Uh, Grover Land's batting average in 1908 for those eight games that he did play as catcher was 188. Uh, Roberto Perez's uh, batting average coming into this game was 183. Uh, Roberto Perez bats ninth in the batting order. He's uh, the worst hitter on the team. But he is a seven program. And today, uh, this World Series game one was on a seven day. So that is his day. He's going to be locked in. He's going to have his best stuff. Uh, he's going to see the ball clear. Every, everything's going to work well. Uh, so he is a 183 batter. But when I looked at the stats, and this is what I see all the time, uh, doesn't matter who it is, what team, what era, what year. Like I said, I read the box scores all the time. Uh, Roberto Perez, for this year of 2016, his overall batting average is 183. On that seven day, though, when you look at all the games he played on a seven day, whether it's the 7th, the 16th, or the 25th of a month, he is 7 for 20. He's batting uh, 350. So you can see... Uh, how his advanced holographic program uh, performs so much better when he's on his day. And he was the hero of this game tonight. As we move ahead now into uh, looking at game two, we have Jake Arrieta for the Cubs. And... Uh, one of the reasons why I thought the Cubs would pull out the first game, and about the only reason, one, it was a historical replay from game one of 1908, and two, uh, what I saw for game two for the Cubs 
was not good. Uh, the Cubs are functioning on their worst day, and the uh, Cleveland Indians are on the, a most compatible day. So they're going to be doing real well. Uh, the starter for the Indians is uh, Tomlin or Bauer. Uh, Bauer had an injury with to his finger uh, when he was trying to fix his drone. So they're thinking about moving him back to uh, pitching in the third game. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Bauer is a two program. Doesn't matter to me. Bauer is a, a two program. Uh, Tomlin is a six and on an eight they're both most compatible. So they're pretty much going to do the same job. But if you have an injury, well that's going to really uh, could really be a problem. Uh, Arietta, Jake Arietta, well, as we looked at in the first video, that is uh, Mordecai Brown's historical twin. Now, for the Cubs to win tomorrow, he's pretty much going to have to carry this team. Uh, I expect it to be low scoring and uh, just a, a real, uh, he's going to have to carry the team for the win. So we'll see if Mordecai Brown shows up from 1908 tomorrow in Jake Arietta and the Cubs. Uh, if anyone's a hero for the Cubs, I think it would probably have to be Jake Arietta uh, for his uh, pitching exploits that he's going to have to perform. We have uh, the hitters. The hitters for the Cubs that should do the best tomorrow uh, would be Fowler, Hayward, Bryant, Russell, and Coughlin. On the Indians, the hitters that should do the best tomorrow would be uh, Davis, Napoli, Chisenhall, Crisp, and uh, Lindor and Ramirez. They had big games tonight, and uh, so they should do good tomorrow, but I, since they had such a big game tonight, I would expect only one hit out of each of those players, uh, if that. I'm thinking, you know, Arietta. he's on a most compatible day. Uh, he knows it's, you know, he knows they need this win bad, so we're going to see how he does. Uh, the bad pitchers tomorrow that you don't want to see Chicago bring out on the field as relievers would be Edwards, Rondon, and Grimm. For Cleveland, uh, Clevinger and McAllister are the relievers you don't want to see. Everyone else on that team is pretty much good, so Arietta is going to really have to uh, really have to do it tomorrow. Uh, the uh, best relievers that uh, the Cubs could bring out on the field tomorrow are Strop, Montgomery, Wood, and Chapman. The best relievers that the Indians can bring out on the field tomorrow is Merritt, Shaw, and Otero. Now, manager-wise, for the Chicago Cubs, Joe Madden, he's going to be on one of his most compatible days, so he's going to, he's going to make good decisions. And uh, the Indians manager, Terry Francona, he's a five program on an eight day, so that's his worst day. So, just like Joe Madden today, watch Terry Francona uh, make some bad mistakes, possibly late, that could affect the outcome of this game. And as we look, uh, just take a, uh, whichever pitcher doesn't pitch today uh, in game two for the Indians, whether it's Bauer or Tomlin, they're going to move the uh, that pitcher that doesn't pitch today to the third game, which is the 28th, which is a one day, and that pitcher is going to be on his worst day. Uh, the Cubs will be going home. The Cubs are functioning as a one team. So that is their day as a team. And the pitcher for that game for the Cubs is Hendricks. He's a one pitcher. So that there is one bet. that I'll give that prediction. The Cubs will rock that game. And they will take that game big time. So tomorrow, the game two with Arietta, Mordecai Brown possibly coming back, his, his historic twin. Let's see what happens. This is a, this is a big game. The Cubs are taking game three. So we'll see what happens and we'll report back uh, before game three with the update uh, from this uh, game two and, and uh, a final look at game three and uh, who to look for as the stars of the game. Uh, thank you for listening. 
Good night.